I don't want to go no more. I don't want you to go. This situation is not sustainable. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do. You see me? Oh. Okay, where am I? Oh, I see you. Yeah, hey. I met Joe Swanberg at a screening of his film, Nights and Weekends, at the 2008 Maryland Film Festival. Last night, the film had its official theatrical premiere at the IFC Center in Manhattan. It's October 11th, 2008. Did you have fun last night? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. I think everybody was really into it and... I didn't watch the movie. Attentive and... But, yeah, but everybody it's good to was... hear, because I didn't ask afterwards, you know, how people really felt about it. I think they really liked it. Yeah? The Q&A was really good. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of couldn't tell whether I was Real, like yeah. belligerent or. But can you tell from but the questions? Yeah, no, it was great. Was, I liked it, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean anything, right. you know. A lot right. of times I'll have that experience where, I'll, you know, it'll be pleasurable for me, but it doesn't mean anything for everybody else out there. See, My this, friend this Kevin be said that it's because I had a little whiskey beforehand, and he's described me as being 2% loose. For the Q&A. You don't want to be too loose, but he said right. I was 2% loose. Yeah, two One of my best experiences from uh, from last year, from like January of 2007, when I had first finished shooting the first half of Nights and Weekends, you know, what I thought was going to be the whole movie. When I was really, you know, sort of bummed out and weird and, and then uh, they were showing a bunch of Kieslowski movies at the film center in Chicago and I just, every day I would I would bring dark chocolate and I would sit in the theater and watch Kieslowski movies. Oh, it made oh. me want to make movies again, oh, you know, and gave man. me a whole new, oh. uh, just a whole new template of how beautiful things could be and ways to photograph. Like all of the way that my photography has changed since I saw those Kieslowski movies, you know, it's just, I think, so noticeable. Is that how, and so that heavily influenced the second half of Nights and Weekends? Absolutely. That, yeah. But Ben, you know, Ben Kosolke shot the second half of Nights right. and Weekends. I gave him a lot of freedom, you know. I mean, I really wanted it to look like his stuff, you know. But, like, in the ways that I would be pushing or guiding him was always towards that kind of imagery, you know, and those yeah. colors. Looks really cool. Thanks. Yeah. When did you start going out? Good month ago. But you didn't tell me? I thought I told you. I, I feel like a definite movement started. Kind of an American not indie film. Indie thing. film movement, yeah, that's more. Yeah. That's, you know, making making things with people that you know. Right. And, so, and the first thing I saw was Funny Haha. Uh huh. And I, I, I had no idea what I'd just seen. I, yeah. I was totally perplexed. I, didn't I know saw it with my wife, you know, right around the time where we were really getting serious about making Kissing on the Mouth, and, you know, I didn't think that I did like it, but I remember we were just both really excited that that, that movie was playing in the theater and we could go <laughs> see it, and felt like gave us definitely encouragement to think like, okay, like, we can make our movie now. I, I think I actually changed when I saw Mutual Appreciation. Uh-huh. That's the one for me. I mean, it changed That's my... one of my favorite movies, period. You yeah, know, like, yeah. I, I really think yeah. it's unbelievably yeah. good. Then nights and, when I watched Nights, nights and Weekends, uh -huh. it, it just, I mean, I had an emotional, I had an emotional journey when I was watching uh -huh. it. I felt like almost an affirmation of the do-it-yourself kind of filmmaking. I felt like this is, I felt like this is what I want to do. Uh -huh. I, I felt a huge motivation. Uh-huh. That's great. Yeah, that's how I feel. Excuses. That's how I feel every day. There some some deep drive and desire to get to work, you yeah. know, or to stay at work if yeah. I'm working. Were you always making stuff? Not at all. I mean, it really, I was. I mean, have you, or have you always wanted to? I've yeah, always. Did you make stuff when you were a kid. Yeah, but I was really into sports as a mm. kid. When I envisioned myself as an adult, I sort of envisioned myself as a professional basketball player. I saw Evil Dead 2 yeah. at a sleepover, right? 
it had such an effect on me, but I didn't, couldn't understand why or what that was, right? And then I think when I saw Raising Arizona, which I, you know, obviously the Coen brothers and Sam Raimi like grew up together and, you know, like had that same sort of sense of humor that I reconnected with that feeling that I had from that sleepover. I was young enough where I didn't pay attention to the names of directors. And I figured they were all made by magic, by like the same three people, you know, like. And then when Raising Arizona ends, the thing that comes up immediately upon the ending is directed by Joel Cohen, you know, like that first big credit. Mm. And then I was like, oh wow, cool. It like clued me in that like, okay, these, these movies are made by different people who have different personalities and different senses of humor. And then I felt like, okay, well I, you know, I have my own sort of way that I look at the world. And like, that's, so that's how you make movies is you make the movie that reflects the way you look at the world. And that's what makes your movie different than the other guy's movie. Right. And yeah. that's the whole point of doing it. Sort of from that moment on, I was like single-mindedly interested in making movies. You don't want to say it out loud? No. It might be dangerous for two charmed people like this to be together. I, I feel like it is a great, great love story, and I don't even find it tragic at all. Yeah. I find it more like how I felt about uh, um, ex-girlfriend. Ex Man, we should have been, we should have just been, we should have been really good friends. Yeah. Well, when I've talked about the movie and tried to kind of summarize what it was about, you know, like the thing that I keep landing on is like how it's possible to really love somebody, you know, to really, really love them, and but for it to not be good to be in a relationship with them. Yeah. And it doesn't make the love less real or less valid, you know? Just means that you shouldn't be dating. I was in a bookstore and I picked up this really huge book about about feminist art. There was this period in the 70s where like a lot of these artists were like using their bodies in their work. And with Nights and Weekends, I think that, you know, I felt a connection where like I feel like Greta and I were putting our bodies on the line too. Like everything, you know, everything yeah. was exposed. Not just dialogue, not just telling dialogue or anything, but like really like putting ourselves in a dangerous physical place yeah. with each other. I don't want to say whether Greta and I will ever work together or not again. I don't know, you know, but like we had, we shot that first half of that movie and then we had that sort of year long break and then we sort of went into that second half kind of knowing, you know, I think knowing that, that like, was this was our last kind of week of kind of working together yeah. this way at least, this way, you know. Yeah. That movie really captures everything about that relationship with her kind of, you know, like yeah. in a really weird way. It feels really complete to me, you know. It doesn't leave some sort of loose end hanging at the end. Yeah. It's also different than my other movies, you know. It's more personal and it's just more com it's more complete, you know. It's a it's a single piece of work that's not relying on any kind of ambiguity to give it meaning or depth or anything like that. We said right. what we said the things right. we wanted to say. This new this new movie though Alexander the Last is really like a, a love letter to my wife, you know. For like, oh. I went through a, 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 an experience of like really re, re, re falling in love with her. Yeah. Nights and weekends also kind of marked the end of, of like yeah. movies about boyfriends and girlfriends, you know, and yeah. those sort of transient relationships. And every, you know, the, the new relationships in my movies are going to be more solid and established and adult. Yeah. And I'm ready to to have the couples in my movies operating from a point of view where they've already made that commitment to each other and now they have to work through it. It's not an option to, to leave, you know, to say goodbye at the end.